Good morning, good evening, good afternoon in whichever time you're watching this. Welcome to SSC and welcome to the 27th day of starting GK Quiz Show in which we shall be discussing scientific names, polity and government schemes. All these are the continuations from the previous session. So if you have not watched the previous sessions, please do watch it. Okay, so let's proceed. There are a total of 20 questions to be discussed in today's quiz. Uh, do participate in the quiz as at the end of each question, you will be given a 10 seconds timer during which you can answer the question in the live chat box if you're watching the premiere and if not in the comment box. Okay, so let's proceed. The PDF of entire sessions, it will cost you only rupees 300. Uh, the video, this series will go till day 50 and for all uh, 50 PDFs till now you will get for 26 days and then later as the video proceeds, uh, you will get the PDFs. Okay, so for this 300 rupees. So for that send a message to 7797058659. So scientific names, it's the continuation from day 15. Let's proceed to the first question. What is Zinzibur Pseudoscarum? This question was asked in Undersecretary, 20, uh, Undersecretary Prelims 2017. Pseudoscarum. Zinzibur Pseudoscarum. Is it zebra, zinzer, zebra grass or zebra fish? Zebra fish. So Zinzibur Pseudoscarum is a ginger actually it was current affair okay since the paper came in 2017 and at that time scientists from botanical survey of india bsi they had discovered a new species of zinger commonly referred to as ginger from andaman and nicobar island so it was a static question related to current affairs okay so this kind of uh, questions can be asked okay even the static gk relate with the current affairs so this is it next azadi rakta indica is what azadi rakta indica your time begins now tulsi titepati neem or aloe vera azadi rakta indica is the scientific name of which well it is neem okay neem which is a member of mahogany family uh, known as merisia and today it is known by the botanical name azadi rakta indica also known as a indica okay a indica hope it's clear next question what is the scientific name of banana your time begins now. I think you should know it. Ananas commusus, Mosa paradesicum, Carica papaya, or none of the above. Banana scientific name is Mosa paradesicum. Okay, Mosa paradesicum is the scientific name of banana. So, uh, other, let's see, pineapple is Ananas cosmosus. Okay, pineapple. Banana, as we saw, Mosa paradesicum. And papaya, it's Carica papaya. It's already written there. Okay, papaya. So I hope it's clear. Next, what is the scientific name of garden pea? The options are there and your time begins now. Scientific name of garden pea. Magnifera indica, Canis familiaris, Brassica compestris or Pisum sativum or Pisum sativum. The correct answer is Pisum sativum or Pisum sativum, whatever we pronounce. It's Pisum sativum known as garden pea. Okay. So, uh, other, let's see, Magnifera indica, it's mango, I think every one of you know. Canis familiaris, it's dog, we have already discussed this in previous session. Mustard is uh, Brassica campestris, okay, Brassica campestris, option number C is mustard. Pisum sativum, it's garden pea. And sweet pea, it's Pisum odoratus, okay, it's called sweet pea, no, uh, it's called Pisum odoratus. And wheat is Triticum astivum, okay, Triticum astivum is the scientific name of wheat. Next question. What is the scientific name of housefly? The options are there and your time begins. Ananas comosus, Musa paradisicum, Carica papaya, or Musca domestica. Scientific name of housefly, housefly is Musca domestica. Other name we have already discussed, Carica papaya is for papaya, right? And uh, uh, Musa paradisicum, I think it was banana, right? Uh, banana. I just forgot, yeah, Musa paradisicum, it was banana only, and Ananas commosus, it was pineapple, okay, so Musca domestica is housefly, fine, so this is a complete scientific name, now let's go to the next section, which is polity, okay, it's the continuation from day 26, the first question, which of the following commission was appointed by the central government on union state relations in 1983, the options are there, and your time begins now, Sarkaria commission, Dutt commission, Setalwad Commission or Raja Mannar Commission. The time is over. The correct answer is Sarkaria Commission. Okay, it was set up in 1983 by Central Government of India to 
examine the central state relationship on various portfolios okay so uh, justice ranjit singh sarkaria was the chairman of commission and that's why it is known as sarkaria commission and he was a retired judge of supreme court of india fine so uh, to uh, to uh, maintain the state central relationship on various portfolios to examine that this commission was set up okay in 1983 sarkaria commission next which of the following taxes are imposed by the union government but collected and appropriated by the states the options are there and your time begins now stamp duties excise duties on medical and toilet materials sales tax or both a and b that is stamp duties and excise duties on medical and toilet materials the correct answer is both a and b which means uh, the revenue generated from the stamp duties and excise duties on medical and toilet material it is imposed by the central government but collected and kept by the respective state government okay so this is it next question which of the following taxes are imposed and collected by state government okay both imposed and collected by state government the options are there and your time begins now state duty sales tax land revenue or all of the above the time is over the correct answer is all of the above okay state governments impose uh, which tax they impose sales tax they import vat okay value added tax still on some products vat is imposed okay though most of it is replaced by gst but in some products vat is still imposed okay in some goods and services and there is professional tax luxury tax entertainment tax motor vehicle tax uh, tax tax on vehicle entering state tax on agriculture income tax on land and buildings and tax on mineral rights all these are imposed by state government okay so state duty sales tax and land revenue all these tax are imposed by state government and also collected by them next question is which of the following duty is imposed and collected by the union government okay union government we are discussing all kind of variations the options are there custom duty excise duty state duty or all of the above the time is over the correct answer to this question is all of the above that is this custom duty income tax and uh, which we saw uh, custom duty excise duty state duty all these are the tax imposed and collected by union government next question which of the following is not a direct tax there are two kind of tax right one is direct and one is indirect the question is which of these is not a direct tax custom duty income tax wealth tax or corporate tax which is not a direct tax the time is over custom duty is not a direct tax okay uh, direct tax they are directly imposed by a central government okay which are the direct tax they are income tax wealth tax corporation tax okay and excise and custom duty were indirect tax but now they are merged with gst okay now they do not exist independently they are merged with gst goods and services tax okay excise and custom duty so they were indirect tax before right and direct tax are income tax wealth tax and corporation tax so custom duty is not a direct tax it is uh, indirect tax or we can say it was an indirect tax okay so merged with gst now so direct taxes uh, what are they they are imposed on taxpayers income and profits and indirect taxes are charged on goods and services okay direct taxes are directly imposed okay as the board says direct on taxpayers income and profits okay if i am having a certain amount of income and if i have to pay some amount of money directly to, to the government in the form of tax then that tax is known as direct tax okay however whichever products we uh, take whichever products we purchase or whichever services we purchase we need to pay a certain amount of money to government in the form of tax and that tax is known as uh, known as indirect tax okay so the taxpayer pay the indirect tax to the government via intermediary and thus they are indirectly paid to the government okay so even if you buy a small biscuit okay 10 rupees 20 rupees biscuit then on that also we need to pay some amount of tax indirectly to the government okay not uh, entire 10 rupees goes to the uh, biscuit company or the shopkeeper okay so this is it next which of the following article deals with the election of vice president okay the answer got revealed only the correct answer is article 66 okay no time off for this article 66 deals with the election of vice president okay i think it is clear article 66 okay vice president next who can remove the vice president from his office the options are there and your time begins now is it president who can remove him or her by a prime minister parliament or legislative assemblies of the state 
the correct answer is parliament okay the indian parliament has the power to remove the vice president of india okay not president not prime minister and not the legislative of the states but it's only the parliament fine next the vice president is the ex officio chairman of which of this the options are there and the time begins now by the word ex officio we mean that he is holding that position due to some other position okay by the virtue of some other position the correct answer to this question is vice president is the ex officio chairman of rajya sabha okay as i was saying ex officio member is a member of a body notably a board committee or council okay in our case rajya sabha who is part of it by the virtue of holding holding another office which means right now a vice president of india is jagdeep dhankar so jagdeep dhankar is the chairman of rajya sabha and he is ex officio chairman why because since he is the vice president he is the chairman okay not because he is jagdeep dhankar so he is the chairman but since he is the vice president he is the chairman so that's why it is known as ex officio fine next question which uh, which one of the following articles deals with the appointment of the prime minister and other ministers the options are there and your time begins now which article in the indian constitution deals with the appointment of the prime ministers and other ministers article 76 74 75 or 72 the time is over the correct answer is article 75 deals with the appointment of prime minister and other ministers the word uh, okay this does not have any detail okay let's go to the next question the total number of ministers including the prime ministers shall not exceed how much okay the total number of ministers in, including the prime minister shall not exceed how much the options are there and your time begins now the shall not exceed 20% of the members of lok sabha 10% 25% or 15% of the members of lok sabha as per the constitution the correct answer is 15% of the members of lok sabha okay it should not exceed uh, more than 15% of the members of lok sabha total number of ministers including the prime ministers okay next government schemes okay now we have uh, five questions from government schemes continued from day 26 when was startup india launched uh, startup india the options are there and your time begins now 2015 2016 2017 or 2018 startup india startup india was launched in the year 2016 what is startup india it's an initiative of the government of india and uh, it was first announced by indian prime minister modi during his speech on 15th august 2015 okay it is basically for the startups okay for businesses the action plan of this initiative is focusing on three areas which are those three areas first of all the first area is simplification and hand holding next funding support and incentives and next is industry academy of partnership and incubation so all these are the part of this uh, campaign called startup india campaign okay so this is it it comes under the ministry of commerce and industry who is minister for commerce and industry right now by the way he is pius goel right so key people are suresh prabhu pius goel okay when it, when it was started and it was started in year 2016 okay so i hope it's clear startup india next question which of the following schemes was not launched in 2015 the options are there and the time begins now not launched in 2015 this kind of question you won't get anywhere okay this i have made by myself only it will be easy for you to remember if you do it like this the scheme which was not launched in 2015 was pmgdy what is it pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana okay you know it was launched in the year 2014 okay and all other schemes that is pmmy what is it it's pradhan mantri mudra yojana okay mudra yojana there is a separate full form for uh, mudra i think it's micro unit uh, development financing agency mudra a refinancing agency yeah m for micro u for unit okay d for uh, micro unit uh, i just got confused okay mudra micro unit uh, refinancing agency so there's something like this okay mudra so pradhan mantri mudra yojana it's a loan scheme and there's another digital india and there's another scheme called skill india all of these uh, schemes were launched in the 2015 whereas pmgdy that is pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana it was launched in the 2014 okay so it's a financial inclusion program for the government of india okay financial inclusion by this term we mean that in those corners of the country uh, where banks cannot be there okay 
and the uh, the people of that uh, those corners need some financial assistance okay so that's why financial inclusion is the term used for that and for this purpose pradhan mantri jandhan yojana uh, has been initiated by the government of india by modi government in the year 2015 as soon in the year 2014 sorry as soon as he came to the government for the first time so this is it okay so this was launched by prime minister of india on 20th of august 2014 and when did he announce the scheme he announced the scheme on his first independence day speech on 15th august 2014 the motto of this pradhan mantri janthan yojana pm jdy is mera khata bhagya vidhata okay mera khata bhagya vidhata it comes under the ministry of finance finance minister is nirmala sitaraman fine next now this is also important okay this is also you won't get anywhere this question which schemes were simultaneously launched by pm modi in 8th may 2015 in kolkata the options are there and your time begins now which schemes were simultaneously launched by pm modi in 8th may 2015 in kolkata the first option is pm sby that is pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana second is pm jjby pradhan mantri uh, pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana yeah and apy atal pension a uh, yojana and other is pmjdy we just saw and skill india pmjdy which option b is ruled out because we just saw that pmjdy was launched in 2014 make in india uh, startup india was launched in 2016 so that is also cancelled pm swanidhi was launched after covid uh, option number d that is also cancelled so which means we have option a that is pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana uh, pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana and atal pension yojana okay these three yojana uh, one is the pension scheme and two are the uh, insurance schemes okay uh, announced by the government of india pradhan mantri a pm modi on uh, 9th of may 2015 at kolkata okay this is basically for the unorganized sector of the society okay basically laborers so i hope it's clear so these are the three schemes launched on 8th may 2015 in kolkata okay pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana these two are the insurance schemes and atal pension yojana it is the pension scheme okay next what are the annual premiums of pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana and pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana as on november 2022 respectively the options are there and your time begins now you know recently in uh, june or july this premiums were revised by government of india so this question can be asked pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana's annual premium is how much and pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana's annual premium is how much the correct answer to this question is for pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana the annual premium is 436 rupees okay and for pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana the annual premium is only 20 rupees by the way this was raised okay before uh, as you can see the government raised the premiums of this Uh, flagship insurance schemes as i was saying pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima yojana and pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana in order to make them economically viable and uh, it has been revised uh, like for uh, pradhan mantri jeevan jyoti bima scheme initially it was 330 rupees only annually and now it has been increased to 436 uh, rupees and for pradhan mantri suraksha bima yojana initially it was only 12 rupees okay 12 rupees per annum and now it has been increased to 20 rupees per annum and this new premium rates got effective from 1st of june 2022 okay so it's related to current affairs as well okay can come so this is it next okay this question got repeated yeah this question got repeated the correct answer is rupees 436 rupees 20 so with this we complete the session thank you so much for pdf you can send message to 77970586589 don't forget to like share and subscribe to ssc sikkim see you in the next session of this series bye bye